My name is Brian Siddhartha Ingle. I'm an osteopathic physician and a Hanna Somatic educator. The work that we are about to present was developed by Thomas Hanna, who introduced Feldenkrais to the United States. Thomas' major contribution to the somatic field was the understanding of sensory motor amnesia. He explained to us that when we take stress into our body, a holding happens. He described this as, as I said, sensory motor amnesia. A muscle does two things. It moves motor and it feels sensory. When the stress of life comes into us, these muscles habitually contract and shorten, causing this situation. And then as we practice somatic education, the lengthening starts to happen. So you have to remember that somatic education is primarily dealing with the nervous system. It's brain work, it's not physical work. By improving the function of the nervous system, we create more length to our muscles and more ease in our bodies. The two aspects to this work, one is the movements that you're about to work with now. The other is hands-on clinical work, which is where a hanasomatic educator will work with the client privately and really assess their individual needs. This body of work, the hands-on clinical sessions, is very important, but it will not be presented here. So I've had 20 years of experience in this field of pain management, and I have to say that Hannah Somatics is the best that I've found to date. It works like nothing else because it's based on a paradigm shift. It's based on a first-person experience. It's moving out of the idea that somebody has to do something to you, but more that you have to do something for yourself. So I am an educator to teach you how to make the changes within your own soma so that you have more, more space and more ease. We're interested in the quality of the movement, not in the quantity of the movement. So therefore, don't be so concerned about the form of the movement, but more the quality, how you feel when you move. Less is more. Work with maybe even 50% of your range of movement, but work slowly and work with awareness and you'll surely get the benefits. The DVD is broken into two parts. One is a long practice with nine chapters. So you must really perfect this, or not perfect, but practice this before you move on to the short practice, which is your daily cat stretch. Working with the long practice, really try to master one chapter at a time. You might work with the first chapter three times until you feel you're proficient with it and then move on to the second, work with that three times and then perhaps the next day continue with the practice. When you feel you're really familiar with the work, with the long practice, then you can move on to the daily cat stretch and work with that as your daily practice. Of course, with the daily cat stretch, you should do it daily, twice a day, morning and evening. First thing when you get up, last thing when you go to bed. If you're persistent, if you're patient with the practice, the benefits will surely come. Just a couple of things you should know about this practice. The surface that you practice on should be firm, like this mat, or it could be on a blanket on the floor. The second thing is you wear comfortable clothing, like Gatry's wearing here. And a couple of things about the movements. From here, bend your knees, put your feet on the floor. Take your left hand behind your head. From here, pick up the elbow to knee. So you can see here, this is Gayatri's full range of motion. And as she comes down, she's slowly feeling into the front of her body, lengthening out of the contracture. And do that one more time. And use half the range of mo motion. So come up. So here's Gayatri's half range. This is perfectly acceptable, as this is as far as you can go. Now slowly come down, feeling the lengthening through here. So just to know you can work with half the range of motion and still get the same benefit, in fact even more. From here come to line your side. Come into this side line. So this is one of the movements in the cat stretch. We'll just see the normal movement. First of all, Gatri breathes into her waist. She breathes out, contracts the waist, picks up the foot. This is the contraction here and slowly coming down, lengthening through the right waist. Now, options. If you've got a neck problem, use a pillow here. And instead of having the hand at the side of the head, you can put the arm along your side. So do that same movement. Breathing in, opening, breathing out, contraction, coming up, 
and here she is contracting her waist. She's not lifting up her head and slowly come down, feel the lengthening. So the important thing here is that you're finding ease and comfort with all the movements. The form of the movement is secondary and the quality of the movement is primary, even if you have to change what the movement looks like. Okay, we'll try something else. Line your back. So, working with the hips and legs, with the double external rotations, the normal way to do it is feet together, knees apart, inhale, arch, exhale, flatten and straighten the legs. If you have a low back that's uncomfortable, what you can do is work with one leg at a time, like so. One leg comes up, the other leg comes up and open and flatten and slowly straighten one leg at a time. The same with the internal rotation. One leg at a time, first up. Yep. Inhale, flatten the back and very slowly straighten the legs. Nice. So now we're going to do the movement for the neck and shoulders. Could you demonstrate that, Gayatri? Slow, mindful movement. So if you have neck pain, you might only want to take this to half your range of motion. So this might just be enough and then slowly come back. If you have low back pain you might want to use a cushion under your sit bone. In fact you could even do this on a chair. Just demonstrate this. So this is probably easier on the lower back. Or if you like actually do it sitting on a chair if you've got low back pain. Chapter 1. Releasing the muscles of the back. Remember the four key principles. Move slowly. Move with awareness. There should be no pain or discomfort as you move. As you move, be aware of any internal sensations. Come to line your back. Get a sense of how you feel in your body. From here, bend your knees and put your feet on the floor. And start to inhale and arch your lower back and exhale, flatten your lower back. As you inhale and arch, the belly gets big and as you exhale and flatten, the belly contracts. Continue with the inhale arch and exhale flatten. Let the pelvis tilt as you flatten. Continue with inhale arch and lightly push your feet in the floor to flatten your lower back. Continue with this arching and flattening. Sense any sensations you can feel as you do this movement in your lower back. Finish the one you're on, relax. Now take your hands behind your head, interlace your fingers, inhale arch, exhale flatten, pick up head, chin to sternum, slowly come down, feel the lengthening through the front body. Arch, flatten and come up once more, feeling the lengthening as you come down, inhale arch your lower back as you're down, exhale flatten, pick up chin to sternum and slowly come down feeling through the front of the body arching flattening as you pick up the sternum goes to the pubic bone and as you come down the sternum moves away from the pubic bone finish the one you're on straighten your legs arms by your side